Bamboo Lab have released another 3D printer, the A1, which takes parts from the A1 Mini and even the P1 and X1 series. Today, we find out what's good, what's bad, and whether this is the ultimate just works budget 3D printer. It really wasn't that long ago that I was testing the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. It performed very well, but many folks were hoping it was going to be something bigger. Now with the regular sized A1, people are getting their wishes fulfilled, well, sort of. In this video, we're going to put it through its paces to find its strengths and its weaknesses. The Bamboo Lab A1 has just launched, and perhaps a standout thing is the price at $399 US. We can compare this to the direct competitors in size and structure, like the original Prusa Mark IV, that's 1100 US, and the Ankamek M5 currently on sale and still 700 US. That's for the standalone edition, but if you were to get the A1 combo, that comes with the four color AMS light, the price bumps up to 559 US, which I think is still tremendous value. Like other Bamboo Lab machines, we have lots of onboard sensors and smart features. The extruder and hot end can actively adjust flow rate. We have auto bed leveling with automatic Z offset, and a self-calibrating equivalent of Clipper's input shaping. And then some of the features that were introduced on the A1 Mini are still here, like the quieter stepper motors and the toolless quick swap nozzles. On top of that, we have the Bamboo Lab ecosystem with the Bamboo Studio Slicer and the Bamboo Handy mobile app. One thing to discuss is the build volume, which is 256 millimeters cubed, the same as the X1 and P1 printers. This printer was sent to me for free by Bamboo Lab for the purpose of making this video, but as always, I'm testing it in accordance with my review policy, and that means I'll be transparent and you'll see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's start with unboxing and setup, and then explore the regular and mini A1 side by side. Inside a cardboard box, we have layers of packaging material, and there is more foam and plastic here than I would like. However, it is space efficient, everything has its place, and all of the components arrived undamaged. For the A1 combo that you're seeing here, there's quite a lot that comes in the box and there is some assembly required. All of the steps are quite straightforward however, and this is in part thanks to the clear and concise quick start printed guide. We also have the same tools and spares kit as the A1 Mini, and that includes the screws required for our assembly. We start by peeling off the protective sticker on the bed, and then installing the double-sided PEI textured bed plate. The main part of the printer is in two pieces, and we flip the base part around and remove some screws that prevent it from moving during transport. We then take the upper portion and align it with the base, and to get the two to fit together, we'll need to angle and align the base to pass through the center. We then remove a fascia panel from the base, and that will reveal a series of holes highlighted with green stickers, where a series of screw and bolts join the two together. That cover is then clipped back in place to keep everything tidy, and we can proceed to remove some of the protective packaging covering the rest of the printer. This will allow us to plug in some cables and there's one main unit that goes underneath the printer. This part is the tiniest bit fiddly, but still quite straightforward as it's color coded and pretty much foolproof. For reliability, that main connector is secured by a screw. We bolt on the same purge wiper mechanism as the A1 Mini to the left hand side of the X axis and the assembly of the AMS light is also identical to the A1 Mini. There's four screws that are used to attach the base, and then the four spool holders are color coded and keyed to ensure they can only be clipped into the correct position. A series of PTFE tubes then go from the AMS light outputs and into the top of the printer's tool head. Rotate the touchscreen to face the front and peel off any protective stickers and we are ready to go, all up around 10 to 15 minutes of assembly. Turning the printer on brings the touchscreen to life and runs you through the rest of the setup process. Things like selecting your language, region, and then connecting to Wi-Fi. Optionally, you can use the Bamboo Handy app to pair the printer with your user account. We then have the same calibration sequence as the A1 Mini. Everything is hands-off and automatic. The noise cancellation I've covered before, and it definitely does take the edge off stepper motor whine. And then vibration compensation, which uses accelerometers to tune Bamboo Lab's equivalent of Clipper's input shaping. Once all of this is done, the printer will check for a firmware update, and if one is available, you'll be prompted to do so with a single touch. These updates are over the air and generally take under 5 minutes. Now that we're set up, let's compare the A1 Mini on the left to the regular A1 on the right. 
The first similarity is that the AMS light is identical on both machines. If you owned both printers, you could move the AMS light back and forth between them. The tool head is also identical on both printers. That includes all of the subcomponents such as the filament runout sensor, the filament tangle sensor, the part cooling, filament cutting blade, and of course that quick swap nozzle system that doesn't need any tools, instead relying on this single clip which holds the nozzle in place once uncovered underneath the silicon sock. Each printer both have identical cameras and lights for illumination. The light diffuser can be swiveled to block the camera if you don't want to use it. And like the A1 Mini, the camera view is serviceable but pretty low frame rate and not exactly clear. The touchscreen interface is identical on both machines, it's just that the A1 Mini version is slightly smaller. The biggest changes are in the frame. They're both bed slingers, but the A1 Mini has a cantilevered x-axis, which means it's only supported on one side. The regular A1 is supported on both sides and has twin z-axis stepper motors. Whereas the A1 Mini had this large central linear rail and bearing to support the bed, the regular A1 with its larger bed uses a twin support system. The A1 has different brackets here and there, but like the A1 Mini, they're metal and very robust looking. The only other difference that I could see is that the power cord for the A1 Mini goes permanently into the machine, whereas the regular A1 has a removable power cord, the same type used on most 3D printers. The sharing of all these components will come with some advantages. Many of the parts between the A1 and A1 Mini are shared, and quite a few of them are already available on the Bamboo Labs shop. So if you're building up a collection of nozzles at various sizes, you're going to be able to switch them in and out as you will between the A1 and A1 Mini. But the bed is also the same size as the P1 and X1 printers. So any third party beds you've bought for those machines, like this patterned bed which leaves the same pattern in the underside of the print, or this Garolite Bamboo Lab bed which I always get comments about, can be used interchangeably between the A1, X1 and P1 printers. So some perks from cross compatibility, but the most important thing is how does it actually print? First we have to load some filament, and I still find this process a little bit awkward on the AMS light simply because it tends to slide across the table, so you need to support the AMS light with your other hand. We feed the filament into the funnel underneath, push the lever until it's detected, and then it will self-load. If you're using Bamboo Lab filament, the RFID tag will be automatically read, and thankfully, you're not locked into using any particular filament, so if you add your own, in a couple of presses, you can set the filament type and color from the touchscreen. Like I usually do, I started with some pre-sliced prints already on the SD card. The touchscreen will give you a graphical preview, and once you click next, you can select which color you want to use, and then finally start the print. Like other Bamboo Lab printers, there's a 5 to 10 minute warm up sequence, double checking things like resonant frequencies, a nozzle cleaning procedure, calibrating filament flow, and of course, purging out that infamous squiggle. There's also the auto bed leveling system, which touches the nozzle down in a grid of positions across the bed. It's completely automatic, including setting the correct Z offset. My first print was this pan flute, I'd say it's pretty close to flawless, and yes, it does play tunes when you blow from the top. I followed that up with this ripcord helicopter, this one had a few artifacts, where clumps of filament seemed to be stuck to the surface. There was also a little bit of stringing in some of the openings. Fortunately, none of this affected the assembly or function, with all of the components still going together properly, and the blade spinning and launching as it should. Next up was this mini section of chainmail. It looks pretty good, but it just doesn't flow very well compared to other chainmail designs that I've printed before. Particularly this one, designed by Flowalistic, linked in the description. I also put in some gloss filament and ran the 15 minute Benchy from the SD card. As you can see, there is a little bit of ghosting present, and the part cooling doesn't look that great either, as can be seen on these areas where the overhangs are close to horizontal. Still a reasonable Benchy for 15 minutes, but a little under the quality that I was expecting. When I shared this result with Bamboo Lab, they suggested that the pre-sliced Benchy was not set up for silk filament and therefore the cooling might not be quite right, so I run the print again with regular PLA. I would say that the result is definitely improved, but still a little bit below what I was expecting. The defects in the overhang areas are reduced, but they are still present. A reasonable start, but I did find on the A1 Mini that the prints that I sliced myself were superior than those pre-sliced on the SD card, so let's get slicing. Bamboo Studio, a fork of Prusa Slicer, will have inbuilt compatibility with the A1, as well as all of the compatible beds that we discussed earlier. Like with the other printers, there's a range of system presets to account for different situations. And like the other printers, we can do a single click to synchronize all of the AMS filaments loaded. It's getting pretty hot down under, so I was looking for a silent bedside fan to use at night. 
and I started with this one by Fiza Fetsack. Print quality was not perfect, but I would still say pretty good. Once the fan was bolted on, the mechanism articulated nicely, but I found that when I tilted it forward to the angle I needed, it became unstable and was likely to tip over. So I switched to this desk fan design by Dimitro, substituting in some remixed parts from Analogic Paradox. And I actually designed my own remixed base to clamp onto the edge of the table rather than sitting on top. Overall, this print is very clean, and probably the most prominent artifacts come from the Z seams where the layer changes. I did, however, at one stage, accidentally print this shroud from black instead of grey, and it had all of these strange artifacts, once again with big bits of filament caught on the surface. I don't have an explanation here, because the reprint in grey was flawless. One part of my design was TPU, which I managed to load up into the AMS, but then the slicer denied me. So instead, I assembled the optional external spool holder, which clips onto the top of the frame, and then you put the output PTFE tube in place of one of the AMS light tubes. This spool of TPU is quite old, and as you would expect, had some fine stringing. But apart from that, the A1 had no trouble printing it at a decent pace. Once cleaned up, the part slid perfectly into the lower mount, and then that liner protects the table as the whole thing slides on. This print was satisfying and cooling all at the same time. Next up, this vase by Omdoyas to test the extrusion consistency. And overall, this is once again a clean print. The color gradient filament works well with the design, but I did notice some random diagonal marks on the surface that I didn't see in any other print, so once again, no explanation. With the wall set to 0.7mm, this is quite strong and should be quite functional. Bamboo Lab seemed to have a collaboration on the way with Ian of Hue Forge, and I think eventually, filament packs will be sold to suit various pitches. That means that some Hue Forge filament paintings are already pre-sliced and set up for this machine, so all we have to do is click print and then enjoy the final result. Hue Forge is so clever and produces great results. This print also showed off the perfect first layers that the A1 delivered every time. If you still haven't tried Hue Forge, you're really missing out. I've linked my video guide in the description. For PTG, I printed more of my chicken feeder brackets, and overall they look amazingly clean, but in the same areas on each print, they suffer from the same loose extrusion that we saw on the black fan shroud. I've asked Bamboo Lab if they know what this might be, and I'll post the answer if I get it in a pinned comment. I picked this Flexi Baby Dragon from 3D Design Shop to show one of the strengths but also the weaknesses of the AMS light system. I would describe this as quite a challenging print. It's got many small segments, uses four colours, with some segments of the wings being very narrow and subject to stringing as well as inadequate part cooling. Again, I didn't select Silk PLA and the Slicer, so that probably contributed here. On balance, however, I'd still describe this one as an impressive print. The trouble is, of course, the time and waste with this taking 7.5 hours and producing all of this waste filament to purge the single nozzle. So multicolor printing is reliable, but at a cost. I do have a video on reducing this waste linked in the description. You may remember that the A1 Mini came with a mystery box with the hardware needed to complete a 3D printable project. And in that video, I used it to create this really cool wireless mouse. This time around, the mystery box was this jet engine model kit, and the included hardware was nuts, bolts, and bearings. This is to make the 3D printable jet engine by Cartier V5 FTW. There's 11 plates in total, pre-sliced using four different colors. And all of this added up to 41 hours of printing. This is really quite the project, as evidenced by how many parts there are when you're done. Even removing all of the support material took me well over an hour. The assembly took me quite a few hours, even when following the detailed video guide that will be released by Bamboo Lab. Some parts are just complicated and quite fiddly to access. I have to admit that it was worth it because the finished result is so cool and so much bigger than I expected based on the mystery box. I applaud the designer for all of the time and skill that went into this model. It's supremely detailed. It's also interactive. And for me, the central section still rotates freely and the outer sections used to as well. But as I bolted on the last part of the housing, it caused these blue pieces to rub and that prevents them spinning freely. If you've got a fix for this, please leave it in the comment section. That disappointment aside, this is a really nice project, and speaks to the reliability of the machine that I was able to print all 11 plates, all 41 hours, without a single failure. One thing I haven't discussed is printer volume. When I tested the A1 Mini, typically most of the noise came from the fan. And to me, the A1 seems a few decibels quieter, and the fan not quite as prominent. 
They're both pretty similar, and I guess printing this fast will never be that quiet. On the Bamboo Lab website, they show the AMS light mounted on top, so I'll show you what's involved. If you want to narrow the overall footprint, there's a pre-prepared 3MF file with all of the components in place. However, apparently what you're seeing in this video is not quite the final version. To print this takes approximately six and a half hours. The bracket clamps onto the top rail like the external filament holder, and of course moves the AMS light up on top of the machine. We have a locking screw in the middle, and backing it off a couple of turns allows the whole AMS light to swivel from side to side. This is a clever feature, as it makes loading and unloading the filament spools at the back a much easier proposition. This mod does make the machine awfully top heavy, which doesn't exactly inspire confidence. There's also the matter of the cord between the back of the printer and the AMS light, which just dangles in the way and doesn't seem long enough to be routed cleanly. To test the effect on stability, I rerun the calibration and then reprinted the 15 minute Benchy from the SD card. Despite the increasing wobbling, there doesn't seem to be any appreciable difference in print quality. We still have the same strengths and weaknesses as the original print. I think my biggest gripe with this machine is that the print quality is just a little bit worse than what I tested on the A1 Mini. But even as tested, I think this is still a very attractive option in the JustWorks category, especially for the price. Let me explain with an anecdote. When I was testing the A1 Mini, I was sent a second prototype translucent unit. And now that I have the regular A1, it means it was time to give away one of the A1 Minis, not because it was undesirable, in fact the opposite. The librarian at my kid's school is someone they rave about, a fantastic educator who's patient, creative and intelligent. So who better person to receive the A1 Mini? As I was preparing my regular README, there were so many sections I could cut out. Things like how to manually heat up the hot end to load filament, and how to import slicer profiles that I had created ready for the printer. Stuff like this is so trivial on the A1 series, where she'll have the choice of using Bamboo Lab Filament or any other brand that she desires. The slicer is set up and ready to go, as is the Bamboo Handy mobile app, and after she made an account, we synced the printer and everything just worked. While we were running off a 15 minute Benchy, she informed me that she used to 3D print 10 years ago. She told me about her slow printer with blue painters tape and prints that constantly fell off. And I proudly told her just how far 3D printing had come. And that with the A1 Mini, she could expect speed and quality like she never imagined. And I feel confident handing over the printer because I know things like firmware updates require no specialist knowledge. And if there's a problem or the printer needs maintenance, it will let her know and give her a QR code so she can seek further help on the wiki. The barrier to entry for a 3D printer like this is just so much lower than it used to be. For me, the A1 Mini was an easy choice to give away because it's almost foolproof. And this machine is quite similar, sharing all of those strengths, but in fairness, some of the weaknesses, like the excessive filament waste on multicolor printing. The capabilities of the printer, the performance, the speed, the ecosystem including the app and slicer really put it ahead of anything else that's available right now. The final clincher is probably the price. As we saw at the beginning, this is so much cheaper than its direct competitors. And Bamboo Lab is a mature brand now with products that really do just work. There's a link down below in the description. You can click buy this and receive it by Christmas, but I would urge not to rush in to instead look at a range of videos, look for trends in their experiences, and of course, discount anyone who's only got positive things to say. That's going to wrap this one up. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.